Here we report a case of a hormone tremor treated with stimulation of the thalamus and subthalamus using a single electrode and interleave stimulation technique. Hormone tremor is characterized by a combination of rest, intention, and postural irregular tremors. This tremor has a frequency of less than 4.5 Hz and is not as rhythmic as other tremors. This tremor syndrome is of symptomatic origin. A common cause is a stroke and head trauma. In most cases, the lesions are found in the midbrain, the dentate nucleus, the cerebellum, or the thalamus. Medical treatment includes use of clonazepam, propranolol, and anticholinergic and dopaminergic drugs. However, the efficacy of pharmacological treatment is limited. Thus, surgical treatments such as thalamotomy, pallidotomy, and a deep brain stimulation of several targets have been reported. We described the case of a 16-year-old right-handed boy who had a severe intention tremor after a motor vehicle accident three years prior to the operation. He had a diffuse axonal injury and was treated in the intensive care unit. After recovery from the injury, he had a severe right arm tremor, which limited his eating, drinking, and writing abilities. Medical treatment was not effective for this patient, and he was referred to us for surgical management of his tremor. Upon examination, the patient had occasional mild resting tremor and a moderate postural tremor and a severe intention and task-specific tremors in his right upper extremity. He was not able to perform the finger-nose finger test on the right side. The patient had a difficulty reaching and holding a cup of water. In addition, he had a difficulty performing a line drawing task. Magnetic resonance imaging showed a lesion in the left dorsolateral midbrain that extended superiorly to the level of the red nucleus. Based on the results of our examination, he and his parents consent to him undergoing DBS surgery. In this particular case, we plan to implant a single DBS electrode to stimulate ipsilateral thalamus and subthalamus. A stereotactic frame was placed on the patient's head under local anesthesia. The provisional target was determined based on the anterior and posterior commissures. The stereotactic coordinates for the ventral intermediate nucleus of the thalamus were 13.5 mm from the midline and 6 mm posterior to the mid commissure point on the ACPC plane. The stereotactic coordinates for the ventral varus nucleus of the thalamus were 2 mm anterior to the VIM target. The target within the subthalamus was 12 mm from the midline, 6.5 mm posterior to the MCP, and 3 mm below the ACPC plane. A trajectory was designed to cross the motor component of the thalamic ventral tear and the posterior subthalamic area. The planned trajectory was set at 53 degrees on the sagittal plane and 18 degrees on the coronal plane. This trajectory was designed to avoid the lateral ventricle, sulcus, and cortical vessels. A borehole was drilled according to the planned trajectory. The arid catheters were inserted through the borehole. This enabled us to perform microelectrical recording in the anterior, central, and posterior trajectories. Microelectro recording sessions reveal that there are a class of the hyperactive neuron units in the VO and subthalamus, while such activity was not observed along the trajectory through the VIM. Test simulation of the VO and subthalamus reduced the tremor significantly. We implanted a melatonin 3387 electrode along the trajectory, which crossed the VO and subthalamus. The end of the electrode was temporarily embedded in a subgallia pocket in the left temporal area. On the same day, an internal pulse generator was connected to the electrode through the wire and implanted in the left subclavicular area and a general anesthesia. There was a significant microlesion effect which reduced the patient's intention tremor immediately after the surgery. After waning of the microlesion effect, the IPG was programmed to stimulate electrode number 2 within the VO nucleus. The parameters were 130 Hz, 90 microsecond, and 3 volts. The VO stimulation reduced the patient's tremors, however, the intention and task-related tremors were not completely abolished. The subthalamic stimulation also reduced the patient's tremors including the task-related tremor, however, dysesthesia was induced by monopolar stimulation with moderate amplitude. The appearance of this adverse effect limited the usage of the electrodes in the subthalamus. We tried to combine a VO and a subthalamic stimulation using an interleaved stimulation technique. Two different patterns of bipolar stimulation were selected to stimulate both VO and subthalamus using the interleaved technique. The first pattern used electrodes number 2 and number 1 as cathodes and electrode number 3 as an anode. The parameters were 90 microsecond, 125 Hz, and 3 volts. The second pattern used for the subthalamus used electrode number 0 as a cathode and electrode number 3 as an anode. 
in this case the amplitude was 2.5 volts. The finger nose finger task was significantly improved following the reduction of the intention tremor. The patient was able to drink a cup of water without spilling it. His line drawing was improved significantly. The patient's tremor scores on the fan Toulouse and Marine tremor scale were improved by more than 70%. Additional stimulation of the subthalamic area using the interleaved technique was effective in controlling the task-related tremors. He was instructed to use the simulation while he was awake. The therapeutic effects have lasted for six years without waning. Patients with hormone tremor have been treated using various surgical techniques. Recent studies have reported the effective control of tremor by DBS. The common DBS target is the VIM nucleus of the thalamus. However, the therapeutic effects of targeting this brain region are variable. Other targets include the zona inserta, prodemiska radiation, posterior subthalamic area, and a globus pilus intern. Studies reporting on the effects of DBS on these targets are basically case series. To date, there are no control studies comparing DBS at different targets. Compared to DBS for the patient with Parkinson's disease and essential tremor, DBS in patients with Holmes tremor requires a larger area to be moderated for control of the tremor. Thus, several reports have indicated the usefulness of combined DBS targets for controlling Holmes tremor. Dual stimulation technique effectively widen the stimulation area. However, these techniques require the patient to have additional electrodes implanted. Our technique uses a single electrode for co-axial dual stimulation utilizing an interleaved stimulation technique. This enables us to design a more complex stimulation area. Two recent studies have reported the usefulness of GPI DBS. They have focused on the importance of the cerebellum basal ganglia pathway in the pathophysiology of a hormone tremor. The reported cases had a good long-term outcomes. However, our case also provides a good example of the excellent long-term outcomes following coaxial interleaved stimulation of the thalamus and subthalamus without additional mobility. In conclusion, coaxial interleaved stimulation of the thalamus and subthalamus may be an effective treatment option for patients with Holmes tremor. Thank you.